Perhaps it's a sign of my age or perhaps something else, but uh, I, can't, uh, I cannot help thinking more and more about what kind of a world uh, we're leaving for our children, grandchildren. And it's not a very pretty picture, not one that should inspire pride. There are quite a few grim shadows that hover menacingly uh, over uh, thoughts about our legacy. And of all of them, two are dominant because they literally threaten survival of the species, at least in any decent form. One is nuclear war, the other is environmental disaster. And not only is nothing serious being done about these challenges, but current decisions are enhancing the threats. Uh, it should be unnecessary to tarry on environmental disasters and how the impending crisis is being handled. Uh, as for the threat of nuclear war, it's on the front pages daily, but in a way that would seem outlandish to an independent observer uh, viewing the uh, strange doings on Earth. In fact, this same independent observer uh, might wonder if we are trying to settle a uh, debate that took place some years ago between two eminent scientists, uh, uh, Carl Sagan, astrophysicist, uh, Ernst Meyer, biologist. Uh, they were debating uh, the probability of uh, intelligent extraterrestrial life. And Sagan, uh, arguing from the point of view of an astrophysicist, uh, concluded that it's very likely because there are so many planets similar enough to Earth so that uh, they could sustain life and hence evolution to higher intelligence. Uh, Ernst Mayer took the opposite view, arguing as a biologist. He said that we should pay attention to the one example we have, namely Earth. And he pointed out that uh, in the history of life on Earth, uh, there have been several billion species, uh, some successful, some not. And uh, turns out that uh, the success of a species, uh, as determined by the number, of, uh, uh, the number of instances of it that survive, uh, is inversely related to intelligence. So the most, most successful species are those that mutate very quickly, like bacteria, or those that have a fixed ecological niche, like beetles. Now, they do very well no matter what happens. And as you move up the scale of what we call intelligence, the survival becomes uh, much more uh, hazardous. Uh, among mammals, uh, there are actually very few of them. Uh, and. Uh, uh, there are a lot of cows, but that's only because humans domesticate them, uh, just as there are a lot of chickens for the same reason. But survival on their own is that they don't do very well. When you get to primates, there are very few. Uh, humans uh, have been very sparsely, have been very sparse throughout the world until very recently, so recent that uh, doesn't mean anything in evolutionary terms. Uh, he also pointed out that the average life uh, expectancy for a species is roughly 100,000 years. Uh, rather ominously, that's about how long it's been that Homo sapiens has been on Earth. So his conclusion is uh, that uh, intelligence is basically a lethal mutation. Uh, as you move up to greater intelligence, there's more and more self-destruction. And it, you could, this extraterrestrial observer might argue that we're trying to prove that uh, Meyer was correct. Certainly what it looks like.